All right, welcome back, everybody. Now we've done all the submetting, all the summarization, class less, class full. Now it comes time to do the final lesson, which is wildcard masking. Now, a lot of people have problems with wildcard masking, and it really is not as difficult as it seems. And I want to show you. You've been doing wildcard masking all along. I showed you early on in the course when we did the diagram that once you do your line, your broadcast calculation number is your wildcard mask. But we'll get back into that and you'll see that. And I'll show you now a different way of doing it. And then when you see, you can say, are you serious? Is that it? That is it. And then I'm going to actually show you how you would use these wildcard masks. Where would you use these wildcard masks? Okay? So let's go ahead and get started. The first way that we're going to do it is by using a constant number, which is 255, 255, 255, right? And then I'm going to subtract whatever mask I'm using. So if I'm using a 255, that 255, that 255, that 252, which is a mask that we normally use between routers, we subtract that from that constant number, and what do we get? Zero, 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 three. There's your wildcard mask. Zeros mean match exactly. So you're going to match exactly the first three octets and then any number that falls in that range. Because remember, the IP address is already set on the interface and the mask. So when you put in a wildcard mask, because let's say you're advertising it, it's going to know the range of IPs that it's looking for. All right? So that is how you get the wildcard mask. But let's make another example. Let's make another example. Let's use this right here. Let's use a 240. So if you subtract that, what do you got? 15. There's your wire car mask. And let's use a different example. Let's use 224. What do you have? 31. Now, very simple, right? We're in the last octet. Oh, come on, lads. You're in the last octet. Let's move it around. Let's change it up a bit, right? Let's do that. Okay? So let's go ahead and go to the third octet. Let's get dangerous. Right? And let's do a 192 subnet mask. Uh-oh. Now we're really getting we got we're really getting dangerous with a 192. What is the increment there? 64, one less, 63. If you subtract there, that's what you get, 63. Right? So 63.255. There is your wildcard mask. It doesn't matter what octet you're in, you have a constant number, and then you subtract from your mask that you're using. That's it. If you were to have, I'll give you one, one last example using this. The mask that we normally also are very accustomed to, the CIDR24 mask. Well then, there you go. That's it right there. That's as hard as it gets. But you've been doing it already. You've been doing it already. And because you've been doing the diagram. So let's use the same examples that we used above. For the diagram. Let's go x dot x dot x dot one two three four line one two three four. That's a two forty mass. Because I know you know that because you've already memorized your bit to decimal table. Four bits on, that's two forty. So what is the incrementation right here? That's thirty two. So that means that this guy right here, if you add all these up, it's thirty one. I mean I'm sorry, this is sixteen. Apologies. This is sixteen. If you add all these guys right there, that is 15. So your wall card mask, the X's, you match. And then in the last octet, you have 15. And let's say in the second octet, X, X, X. No, in the third octet, I'm sorry. And let's say 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So the X's match. Then Three bits in, that means you're incrementing by 32. So that means that these boys right here, they add up to 31. And, and when we're talking about what are we adding, we're adding bit values. We're adding bit values that are on top, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, and so forth. Okay, and then we add these bit values here, that comes out to 255. There you go. That's it. And remember... This is geared towards certification exam. Okay, geared towards certification exam. 
So this is as hard as it gets to calculate the wild card mass. Now, where in the world do you use a wild card mass? Very easy. And this is how they're going to hide IP addressing questions. So let's move this up to the top a little bit. Gives us a little bit more room to write. So let's go ahead and do an access list. Access hyphen list hyphen list. Right? And we'll do a standard access list. And we're going to deny. Let's deny a network. 192.168.1.0. We're using a CIDR24, a slash 24, a default class C mask. So we go 0, 0, 0. We want to block the entire network. There you go. There's your wildcard mask. By doing the methods that I showed you on top. 255, 205, 205, you know, the constant number. And then the mask that we're using, which is a 24. And we get a 255. That means that we're going to match the first three octets. And then whatever number comes after that, it will be blocked. Within that range of 1 through 254. Because remember, the IPs... And the mask are sitting on the interface. The mask is it. Now the same thing goes for uh, if you want to do a host, let's say, access list. Ooh, typing all sorts of letters. Access list. Ten. Deny. Uh, let's say ten dot one dot one dot one. An actual IP address. Zero dot zero zero zero. Because each zero means match exactly what's on that octet. So I am denying each and every, or I'm matching each and every octet, but it's a deny. So whatever it matches up with that IP, that one will be denied. So you can use an actual all zeros to match exactly each and every octet. Okay? So you can use a combination of wall card masks uh, with access list. Because this access list really, if you look at it, which you will when we get to that particular part in the course, it's the same thing if you were saying deny host 192, no, 10.1.1.1. .1 it's the same thing, but you're using a wildcard mask to use it. So you're saying the same thing, but using a wildcard mask. Now, the other way, the other way, that you can use an access list is when you're advertising a route using OSPF. That is the only time, and I want to clarify this now before I actually do it. When you're using RIP version 2 and EIGRP for your certification exam, the CCNA 200 120, you will advertise the class full boundaries of the address. You will not use wildcard masks in EIGRP. What you're required to do is advertise the class full boundary. Okay? Because I've seen problems with that before. The only time you use wildcard masks is with a routing protocol is when you're using OSPF again for the CCNA certification. So, let's go ahead and do an OSPF statement. Router, OSPF 1, which is the process ID number, and we'll learn all about that later on. Network, I'm going to advertise the network, 192.168.1.0. Wildcard mask, 000255, and then the area. Area 0, let's say. All right. And then we can advertise the next network. Network. Uh, 10.1.1.4.0003. Because it's a 252 mask at the end. Area 0. And network. Let's say the other side would be 10.1.1.8. Same wildcard mask. Because you're using a 252. Area 0. And then one of the things that you will be doing in OSPF is creating loopback interfaces. And we'll learn all that once we get there, so don't worry. Uh, network. Now, what I like to use for loopback addresses is what's called the host address. So I'll use a 1.1.1.1. Uh, and then I want to match that exactly. 
So therefore, 0, 0, 0, 0. Area 0. So you see, the, this is where you would use wildcard masking. It's not hard to calculate, as you saw here above. Very, very simple to calculate. But this is where they hide IP addressing questions, especially when it comes to this gentleman right here, OSPF, because you may get a question that states based on, let's say, this above network statement, 192.1.0. Well, that's kind of easy. Let's say the second network statement, 10.114.003. What are they, the IPs that fall within that range? Well, it would be five and six. That would be the range because this is your broadcast calc, right? What's three and four? Seven. What's in between seven and four? Five and six. There you go. That's how simple this is. So embrace the wildcard mask. Embrace on how to do all these things because you already know everything about IPv4. Now it comes time to subnet and IPv6. So be ready for that.